Back on CBS Sports HQ, the celebration was short-lived for Kentucky Derby winner Medina Spirit and owner Bob Baffert's team. The win came in a question in the days to follow after it was revealed that Medina Spirit tested positive for traces of a steroid following his run for the Roses. Amongst Baffert's numerous claims was that the steroid derived from a topical cream used to treat dermatitis on the underdog thoroughbred. But for all the headlines had, Medina Spirit will be in the gates for today's Preakness Stakes. Here's a look at those odds. Uh, Medina Spirit currently going off as third favorite at 9-2 to two above uh, the Kentucky Derby winner. Keep me in mind and Ram as we have a whole host of winning wagers on the way with our best. Let's welcome in our track side sharp, Sportsline analyst Tim Doyle and the legend hammering Hank Goldberg with us now. Gentlemen, welcome. Uh, TD, before we get to the breakdown, how do you like to approach the Preakness? Just some general gambling philosophy. Yeah, well, just to give you a horse racing 101, if you don't know what the win bet is, you probably shouldn't be betting on horses, all right? That means you go out and win the race. Place would be second. Show would be third. You really don't make much money with those. How you make money is with the exotic bets. Pick the first two finishers of the race. That's called an exacta. Pick the first three finishers of the race. That's a trifecta. And then, Joe... If you want to get wacky, you want to get wild, the super fact is the first four finishers, that bet can vary from 10 cents to 50 cents. And obviously, the more horses you bet, the more expensive that ticket's going to bet. But I have a trifecta. I know Hammer and Hank's got the winner. So let's get to it, Joe Musso. We're going to dive into those exotics in just a moment for first straight picks. Uh, as for the field, the drama surrounding Medina Spirit, well documented to this point. Hank, Medina Spirit undergoing extensive pre-race testing today. Do you feel that the circus surrounding the thoroughbred will affect performance this evening? He doesn't know that he's being tested. He just is going to run. <laughs> and his running style, is, he drew a great post, post three. And yesterday, you really wanted to be close to the rail. I haven't watched the first two races uh, today, or the first one, rather, that was on the dirt. But uh, the rail was very fast, and that's where you want to be. And he's going to want to go for the lead, I'm certain. So, uh, And there's no uh, real speed to, uh, to go with him. So uh, it doesn't affect the horse. It's uh, just a controversy. Yeah, I I'm really worried about the controversy because... Horses have feelings. You know what I mean? Like, they understand something's going on. And heck, I use betamethasone. Why? Because Medina Spirit did. No, 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 no. That's actually the ointment that he used. I have psoriasis. And when I put betamethasone on, you know what happens, Joe? I run faster. I jump higher, right? You can even see it reflected in the odds. You're getting better odds now, meaning more value now on Medina Spirit than you would have pre-race. All that matters is the odds you get when the race obviously goes to post and the horses take off. But I'm really worried that the horses have feelings. They have emotions. And the fact that this thing has been tested time and time again, I think you have to take a stand, a hard stance in this race. Either you believe the narrative that Medina Spirit is clean, he's going to run well, or you think he's going to be in the cooler and up the track. I was at the Belmont Stakes when Big Brown was going for the Triple Crown. And there was a lot of controversy around Dick Dutro, who's the trainer of that horse. And where did Big Brown finish chasing the Triple Crown? He's still running. He never finished the race, for crying out loud. And I have those same thoughts about Medina Spirit. All right, so a couple varying schools of thought uh, when it comes to the Kentucky Derby winner in this one. Hank, Hank waving them off. Uh, Hammer, we need your pick to win and then dive into those exotics for us. What are you stacking up? Well, let me just say this. The horse has done nothing in his training that will affect his performance. He shipped early in the week. He had his normal workout. I talked with Wayne Lucas yesterday, who's been watching these horses, and he said he looks fine on the racetrack. You, you know, he doesn't know what's going on. Come on. Uh, anyway, uh, the, pro the one problem with him that Wayne pointed out is that he's a very lightweight horse. He's not the big, full-grown horse. He's very frail-looking, although he's shown no indications of it. But coming back in two weeks is a factor. And the one thing that could cost him is that if he tires. And uh, But Wayne said that he still thinks the horse can win because it's such a lousy field. Uh, and that's the key to this race. 
There's nothing in here to speak of. Now, Midnight Bourbon is a very good horse, and uh, we talked about him all week long. He's trained by Asmussen, who's a great trainer. He's got Irod Ortiz. He was training well and improving and ran second in the Louisiana Derby. And then uh, he, in the Kentucky Derby, didn't break well, and he's, his feet came out from under him, and yet he passed most of the field and finished sixth. And this horse is training great right now, and Wayne told me that this horse looks fantastic on the track right now, and that's why he's getting all the action. That, and people don't want to see the Baffert horse win, and I think that's, uh, I think that's why they're staying away from him a little bit. So those are my two horses, and uh, I'm going to use them in exactas. Now, why is Wayne running in this race? He said that this field is so bad, he decided to enter something <laughs> because uh, the outside chance that his horse could hit the board. And he'll see. Historically, a long shot, a real bomb, will be part of the exotic bets. So with Tim talking about exotics, he's right. You know, some long shot could come in third or fourth. I like the exacta box with the top two that we've talked about. And I'm going to box him. I'm going to use Wayne's horse. Uh, but I'm, I also like the nine and the 10. The 10 is probably, you know, it's Baffert's other horse. He's probably the best, although I don't like the post. And I like uh, Chad Brown's nine horse. Uh, Chad really likes his horse, this horse, uh, better than he likes his other one because uh, he, he seems to be better off the pace and uh, better strategically. So uh, that's it. Uh, I'm going to bet the three and a five with the uh, nine, ten, and Ram in exact. Uh, Hank and I may not see eye to eye with Medina Spirit, but man, we are Thelma and Louise on Midnight Bourbon. Put your hand out there, Hank. Here I come with you. And the realization is you got Irad. You got the best rider in the United States of America. And something about that left arm, Joe, he loves getting left-handed on a whip. And traditionally, you could uh, Ricardo Santana rides for Asmussen. Actually, they won the third race at Pimlico earlier today uh, on the Preakness undercard. So those guys have synergy together. The fact that Asmussen goes, hey, I know I got Santana. Uh, yeah, bye-bye. I'm going to get Irad on the horse. Why? Because Irad's the best rider in the country. Sorry, Joel Rosario and, and everyone else, Flavian Pratt. Irad's the best. He didn't win the Derby because his horse had the one hole and the horse got slammed at the start. But Midnight Bourbon is the pick to win. And I'm going to use Midnight Bourbon on basically every other horse, not named Medina Spirit. I think Medina Spirit is in the cooler here and it will be lucky. I repeat, lucky to hit the board in the race. Sometimes you got to watch the odds board. And the fact that the horse is taking no money right now, I don't care how much beta methazone Bob Baffert lubes the horse up with. This horse is in the cooler. I'm taking a stance here. Midnight bourbon, that's your pick. Tim Doyle and Hammer and Hank Goldberg breaking it all down at the Preakness. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, let's take a look at those picks. TD, he's on midnight bourbon to win. Hank likes Midnight Bourbon as well. He's not jumping off of Medina Spirit just yet. He's not as in the cooler as TD is. There's your exotics as well. Tim's trifecta and Hank's exact the box. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.